The meta will see massive changes this week after Tuesday's hotfixes, which include some much needed buffs to Holy Priest and some nerfs to the overtuned specs in Season 2. We're here to break things down with an update to the solo shuffle tier list after the hotfixes go live on May 16th. Starting off, we have an update to Arms Warrior, who will be dropping down a full tier after this week's hotfixes. Prior to the patch, Warriors were looking like one of the strongest melee for Solo Shuffle, but with a series of nerfs targeting the Skull Splitter build and Sharpened Blade, combined with a big nerf to the crit modifier in 10.1, we think Warriors will be joining the stacked A tier. So far, this patch seems to have swung the balance in favor of casters, which is quickly putting some melee behind the curve when it comes to overall performance in Solo Shuffle. We still think Arms Warriors will be highly competitive, but will no longer be the clear standout for melee DPS. With a nerf to its burst damage and a sharpened blade, Arms Warriors will now have to rely more on their constant pressure, which is hard to maintain in a caster-dominated meta. The same is true for Rhett Paladin, who are also moving down half a tier. Rhett's have been on a wild ride of class tuning for the last few months, and our decision to move Rhett down reflects the evolving meta, which is not friendly for one of the least mobile melee DPS. While Paladins boast some amazing team-wide utility for Solo Shuffle, they are very prone to getting bullied by the high-tier wizards that have quickly swarmed the meta. So while all that amazing utility tech might give Rhett value in some lobbies, they are still too inconsistent to remain in the highest tiers. Finally, perhaps in the biggest fall from Grace, we are also moving Unholy DK down half a tier. Tuesday's hotfixes include a minor nerf to reanimation, which is sometimes just called zombie. If there was a metaphor that would represent the DK class perfectly, it would be an actual zombie, something that is barely alive and on the constant brink of death. You would think that a caster-dominated meta would favor DKs, but with a complete redesign to Spell Warden, they have become an anti-magic shell of their former self. Take a look at this AMS popped instantly here. Okay, now it's gone. That was under one second. Yeah, DK survivability this season is looking extra bad in dampening. Not all was doom and gloom on the melee side of things, as Demon Hunters are actually moving up half a tier. DH was on the receiving end of some buffs and nerfs, so let's break everything down. First up was an increase to Chaos Strike, which prior to this buff was around 10-15% of scoreboard damage for Demon Hunters. This wasn't the only change, however, since after a redesign in the 10.1 patch, Rain from Above was seeing some play in the first week of the season, but Blizzard has decided to tone back some of its original damage buffs with a slight nerf. In the grand scheme of things, this really isn't a big deal. Rain from Above is a PvP talent, after all, which simply means exploring other options if this nerf winds up being too much. The real benefit of playing DH in this meta is that they continue to be one of the best melee for handling casters since Demon Hunter passively takes less spell damage. While this defensive perk doesn't instantly make them the best melee in Season 2, it certainly helps their relative rankings for melee DPS and solo shuffle. Finally, despite not moving on our tier list, we think Frost DK is a big winner from this round of hotfixes. Just like Demon Hunter, Frost DK did get a nerf to cooldown damage, with Pillar of Frost granting less strength in PvP combat. This was then offset by a huge series of buffs to almost every single damage button in their toolkit, which we think is a really good thing for any Frost DK player. These buffs seem to suggest that Frost DK will have more sustained damage, which is amazing since their playstyle can feel a bit awkward in Solo Shuffle. The spec is so dependent on setting up one minute goes with AoE stuns and then weaning in between setups while hitting like a wet noodle. These changes will likely make Frost DK feel much better to play in Solo Shuffle, but we doubt they are enough to launch them up a full tier. Here we have our updated Solo Shuffle tier list for the second week of the season. Overall, this hasn't been a favorable meta for any melee, but Demon Hunters and Enhancement Shamans seem to make the best out of these dark times. We should note that Enhancement Shamans did get a healing nerf to Earth Shield, so there might be some adjustments in a future update. The same is true for Windwalker Monk, but again, we don't expect this to dramatically alter their relative strength. Sub Rogue is still looking quite strong at high MMR, but will likely be much lower in tier for the majority of the player base. This is always a difficult spec to rank since it is so dependent on an individual player's skill more than anything else. With melee covered, let's move on to our first ranged DPS losers, starting with BM Hunters, who will be moving down an entire tier. Originally, we projected BM Hunter to carry over its performance from Season 1, but with everyone ditching their old tier sets, BM Hunter might have been hit disproportionately hard, since their set bonuses represented such a massive part of their overall power level. On top of this, the meta just isn't that favorable for Hunters overall, with the residual AoE damage coming from the high tier wizards being a bane for any pet class. 
While future tier set acquisition might rebalance the meta in a few weeks, hunters seem to be lagging behind other DPS. The only other range spec we are moving down is Fire Mage. Overall, Mage continues to have the biggest learning curve for any ranged DPS, and now with Shamans and Warlocks dominating the meta, the Mage class has some new bullies. Frost, on the other hand, is actually getting a 4% damage buff, which might not seem like a big deal until you consider the scaling effect this has with a talent like Slick Ice. While this will definitely help their standing overall, we don't expect Frost Mage representation to suddenly skyrocket. On the other end of the spectrum, we have our ranged DPS winners, which includes Destro Warlock and Balanced Druid, who are staying on the S tier. Destro was hit with a few damage nerfs, but the spec is currently so overtuned that we doubt this will have a huge impact on their overall performance. That's why we think Destro is actually a winner this time around, since the nerfs don't seem to be enough to drop him down an entire tier. On the flip side, Affliction will likely crawl its way up half a tier after Tuesday's hotfixes, which include a 3% damage buff across the board. Again, this might not seem like much on paper, but could have a multiplying effect when combined with other modifiers. Affliction has been a difficult spec to place on tier lists for a while, since there is such a high mechanical demand for playing the spec. In order to excel as an Affliction Warlock, your juking skills really need to be on point. Now though, with melee seeming slightly worse overall, Affliction might have a better time in the Season 2 meta, especially since its damage output has looked quite strong so far. With that, we have our updated picture of the ranged meta for the second week of Season 2. We still think Balanced Druid and Destruction Warlock will remain on top, despite some nerfs to Destro sustained damage. We should note that Ellie Shaman got both a healing decrease and a minor damage increase, which seems to be a wash. Overall, our a tier remains fairly stacked, with any of these specs being a few tweaks away from breaking into the highest tier. Warlocks also saw a class-wide nerf to Observer HP, which is the biggest buff for any weak auras users, but we don't expect this to have a huge impact impact on Warlock ratings overall. As a final disclaimer, we would like to emphasize that Mage is still mechanically demanding to the point where it might be half a tier lower for less experienced players. If you want to play any Mage spec in Season 2, we highly suggest Frost. Finally, let's wrap things up on the healing side of things with Holy Paladins continuing their streak as the worst overall healer. With the meta currently favoring casters, Holy Paladins feel too inconsistent for casual ladder grinding. Although they boast some extremely good anti-melee tech, none of it even matters if all you proc or caster heavy lobbies. So as the healer in most need of some love, we think Holy Paladins are best represented as the only mid-tier healer. Holy Priest is a different story, and we are projecting some upward mobility after Tuesday's hotfixes. This comes after a series of fairly significant buffs to the majority of their healing toolkit, with Renew, Flash Heal, and Serenity getting some juicy new modifiers in Season 2. Holy Priest mains are definitely happy about this, considering their healing output had been noticeably lower going into Dragonflight. We don't expect these buffs to elevate them to Shadowlands Season 2 levels, but for the meantime, we'll represent a modest boost in relative strength compared to other healers. The only other healer moving up is Casted Mistweaver Monk, which simply reflects the evolving meta. Currently, it seems like Disc Priests and Mistweaver Monks are the standout healers across all ratings, with Monks benefiting massively from caster heavy lobbies. And now, with the addition of Zen Spheres in 10.1, Mistweaver now has a way to directly contribute to kills by empowering their team's damage by 10% on a single target. When you combine this with their strong healing output and passive playstyle, Monks are able to fit into almost any lobby while having less mana issues compared to other healers. With every major change covered, we have our predictions for the healer meta after Tuesday's hotfixes. Mistweaver Monks are joining Disc Priest on the S tier, which is simply the result of the evolving meta, which seems to favor highly mana efficient healers. Our A tier is fairly stacked, with Holy Priest joining the big boy party for the first time in months. Although nerfed, we still think Fistweaver has a place in the Season 2 meta, since it can still perform well into some casters. Holy Paladin, on the other hand, is in dire need of some major tuning to feel as consistent as the other high tiers. If you want to gain rating fast this season, we have some amazing new courses which can only be found at skillcap.com. This includes brand new Master and Minutes guides for every role, which condense years of game knowledge into bite-sized pieces. We even have a brand new Buff Knowledge course, which teaches you what to look out for and how to dispel against every class. We're also updating class courses every week, including a redesign to all of our damage and healing guides in 10.1, with a brand new learning experience, which includes new micro commentaries and master and minutes guides, where you can learn all the tricks on how to min-max. So if you want to stay ahead of the meta and get the rating you've always wanted, then take advantage of our rank up guarantee and learn more about skill cap by visiting the links below. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.